Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good Sunday morning. God bless you. Christian House of Praise is live. Glory to God. As you get ready to come into the house to hear the word on today, we pray that the Lord has been encamped around about you and keeping you. Praise God. Yes, we are live. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are we ready for the word this morning? I am ready. God bless you. Yeah, I am ready for the word this morning. October the 4th, 2020. My God. God has seen us thus far, and I believe he's going to see us all the way. Praise God. Good morning. Good morning. Greetings. We glad to have you today. Glory to God. Yes, we are happy to have you in the house today. Are y'all ready for the word today? I believe, I believe by the revelation of the Holy Ghost that God has a word specific just for you today. I believe that you're going to get what God has for you. Amen. Are you ready? Do you have your B-I-B-L-E's? This is what we need. <laughs> Glory to God. Do you have your B-I-B-L-E's? Do you have your Bibles? Are you ready for the word? Amen. Are you ready for the word today? You might even want to get your pen out. I talk a little fast sometimes, and I may I may go a, I may give a scripture and, and you might want to write it down because I may pray a prayer uh I may paraphrase it, uh, and you might want to go back and read it in its entirety for yourself. So you might want to get you a pen. You might want to get you some paper, but definitely get your B-I-B-L-E. This is the book. <laughs> yeah, this is the reference manual. Amen. Glory to God. Are y'all ready for the word today? I'm ready to jump into this word. I got a lot for you today, and I want to make sure that we get it all. Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> Let's jump in. We're going today, today, we're going to John, the 15th chapter. Glory to God. We're going to John, the 15th chapter, and I'm going to read in your hearing, glory to God, the first five verses. Is that all right? John, the 15th chapter, verses one through five. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's get there. Let's get there. Get our Bibles out. Let's get ready for this word. <laughs> glory. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for this word. Hallelujah. Yes, good morning, good morning. I'm asking right now, hit that share button. Wherever you're at right now, we're getting ready to eat. And it's all right to invite somebody else to consume what we're getting ready to eat. It's going to be enough on the table that we can share, amen? So hit that share button right now that you can share this word with somebody that knows you, that's list, that they can be able to listen and to receive. The Bible says faith comes by Hearing, oh my God, I don't care if the video goes out as long as you can hear me. Yeah, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, amen. So we ask right now that you would hit that share button. Where did I tell you that we're going today? John, the 15th chapter, verses one through five, glory to God. And before we jump in, I'm going to give you a few administrative notes. This is October, praise God. Look, God then saw us all the way to the 10th month of the year, glory to God. And October is Pastor Appreciation Month. Now, if you got a pastor, if I'm your pastor, you have a pastor, please appreciate the gift that God has given you. Amen. Yeah, go ahead. Right there. Let somebody know. Appreciate the gift that God has given you. And it's not a day. It's a month. October is Pastor Appreciation Month. Now, I'm not trying to get anything from you, praise God. I got everything I need. The Bible says if you got him, you got everything you need. And I'm going to show you today in John, if you abide in him, you got everything that you need. But I'm trying to get something to you, not from you. Oh, glory to God. I'm preaching already. This is October, Pastor Appreciation Month. So appreciate the gift that God has given you. Amen. And October the 13th. We will be doing our food distribution, our monthly food distribution with Feed America. October the 13th, that's a Tuesday. Uh, volunteers are appreciated. You can come out and volunteer. It's from 9 to 12 at the Oak Grove Community Center. We ask that you come out, be a part of this thing. Let's bless our community. God made us a blessing so that we could bless others. Amen. 
So let's make sure we come out for that. October the 13th, that's on a Tuesday, from 9 to 12, we will be doing our Feed America <coughs> food distribution. Amen? And as always, we still accept clothing uh, donations. They can also be dropped off at the Oak Grove Community Center between the hours of 10 and 4 p.m. 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Amen. Are y'all ready for the word? Let's get into this thing. Where, where are we going today? We're going to John, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 5. Do you have your Bible? Glory to God. Yeah. See, because if I say it wrong, if I, if I, if I, if I miss a beat, you can always go back to the manual. Glory to God. You can always go back to the book. Yeah, I'm human. <laughs> glory to God. I didn't fly in here. I didn't float in here. I walked in just like you. Glory to God. Yes, I'm a man. So I may make a mistake, but you got the manual. You got the book. You got the B-I-B-L-E to go back and get what you need. Glory to God. Let's jump in. When you get to John, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 5, you will see these words there. And the word of God says, I am the true vine. And my father is the husband man. Every branch in me beareth not, that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth, that it may bring forth more fruit. Well, watch out now. Now he says in verse 3, now you are clean through the word, woo, which I have spoken unto you. Verse 4 says, abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. In verse 5, this is where we're going, this is where we're going. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, and without me, you can do nothing. Glory to God. Go ahead. Give somebody a high five right there where you're at, right there in your house, wherever you may be. Give them a high five and tell them it's all about him. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. It's all about him. Glory to God. It's all about him. And if you need a title for today's message, we would just entitle this message here, Nothing Without You. Nothing Without You. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? In these five verses, look what Jesus does. He gives us, y'all, he gives us purpose. Oh, my God. Let's back up. He gives us identity, purpose, plan, and provision. Oh, my God. And the fifth thing he gives us, y'all, is power. Woo! It's right there. It's in your Bible. I just read it to you. He identifies who we are. I talk to so many Christians that seem to have an identity crisis. Oh my God. It's something when you don't know who you are, when you don't know whose you are. He tells us here, he identifies us. The first thing he tells us is who he is. Did you get it? He says, I am the true vine. Oh my God. I am the true vine. And then he gives us our identity and he lets us know who the father is. And then he shows us who we are. Hmm. I don't want you to miss this. If you don't get nothing else I say today, don't you miss these points right here. God is letting you know who you are, who he is, and what your purpose in life is. Oh, my God. Did you get it? What's my purpose, Pastor? What should I be doing? Well, if you read these five verses, he says your purpose is to bear fruit. Oh, my God. I'm getting happy already. I feel my afro coming back. He said, your purpose is to produce fruit. My God, that's, that's our purpose. You're wondering what you should be doing in life. Matter of fact, some of us are wondering who we are. He says right here, he says, you are the branches. Oh, my God. He said, I'm the vine. Now, it would be foolish for a branch to separate itself from its life source. Oh, good God Almighty. This word is good, y'all. This word is good. He tells us who we are and what our mission is in life, and that's to produce fruit. Now, we live in a nation today that has become dependent, self-reliant on itself. We have become independent of our source. 
Oh my God. We started out establishing ourselves on the foundation of the rock. Oh yeah, we know the nation was founded on the word of God. But somewhere along the way, we lost our first love. Woo! Glory to God. We lost our first love. How did we lose it? We started believing the hype. We started drinking the Kool-Aid. Uh, my mother used to say, we started smelling ourselves. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. We started to believe the hype, y'all. We started to drink the Kool-Aid. And, and when we started to smell ourselves, we started to think that it was all about us. Oh, my God. Instead of all about him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We live in a time now where, where the world has, has stopped looking at what the Lord has done. And we start looking at, look what I have done. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. It used to be all about him. Now it's become all about them. Mm, mm. I want to help you today. Uh, today's lesson is nothing without you. Oh, my God. We're nothing without him. I want you to understand today. He said, I am the true vine. Oh my God, you better check your connection today. I am the true vine. And he says, just in case you didn't know who God is, he said, my, the father is the husband man, the caretaker, if you will. Oh my God. See, we've allowed pride and selfishness to come in and to replace our dependency upon God. And now it's every man for himself. The me factor has dominated us. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It used to be us. Now it's all about me and we. And we've let pride come in. And pride has, has, has come in and it has moved God out. Mm, my God, my God. Oh, my God. Somebody talking about they took prayer out of, out of school. I want you to understand today, you, what you, you can not have the power to put God nowhere, and we certainly don't have the power to take God from any place. <laughs> Glory to God. Yes, yeah. He is divine. My God. And then you got to recognize who you are. Mm, who are you? Yeah, yeah. See, the enemy is having a heyday, y'all. The enemy is having having a, a party uh, looking at all of the division and discord amongst God's people. Mm. See, the Bible is primarily talking to the people of God. It's no least in the Bible directing itself primarily to the world because the world got to first start directing itself towards God. Mm. My God. So why God focuses on the church? He said, if my church would get right, then the world would get right. Woo! <laughs> Glory to God. Don't you know we are nothing without God? Mm. The Bible says in Psalms 127, it says, except the Lord build the house. They that labor, my God, <laughs> they labor in vain. My God. Yeah, yeah. He didn't say you wouldn't build the house. He said, but if you build it without him, your labor was in vain. The Bible says, except the Lord keep the city. Ain't no least in you staying up all night trying to watch. Ain't no least in you packing your pistol. He said, except the Lord keep the city. Oh, my God. They that watch, watch in vain. <laughs> my God, my God, my God. He didn't say, he didn't say you shouldn't watch and pray. Don't say what he didn't say. Oh, my God. Hear what he said. He said, except the Lord keep the city. He said, all your watching is in vain if I don't do what I said I'd do. Woo! Glory to God. I'm so glad that God is in control, y'all. I'm so glad that my faith is in God and not in man. I'm so glad that I walk and lead a life that's pleasing unto him that I can foreshadow and see what God would have me do versus what man will. Woo! Glory, glory. He says, it is in vain for you to rise up early and to stay up late. He said, you might as well go to bed, baby. I'm in Psalms 127. It's in your Bible. That's why I told you to get a pen. You might want to write some of these scriptures down. He said, it's in vain for you to rise up early, stay up late. Why? Because you can't change nothing. He said, to eat the bread of sorrow. Oh, my God. He said, but he give his beloveds sleep. He give his beloveds rest. He said, you might as well go to bed. Ain't no least in you staying up. He said, because you can watch all night long. He said, but if I don't keep the city, your watching is in vain. 
oh, that's a good place to praise him at right there. That's a good place to praise him at. Because I thank God that I don't have to stay up and worry about it. I don't have to stay up. I don't have to stay up pacing the floor all night because my God is in control. I don't have to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't have to worry about what's going to happen the next day. He said, because I'm keeping the city. <laughs> Glory to God. He said, don't worry about it because I built the house. And see, when you build anything, if you don't build it upon the rock, the foundation that this nation was built off of. Somewhere along the way, we lost our way. I told you we started drinking the Kool-Aid. We, st we started to smell the coffee. We thought it was all about us. But God said, you forgot your first love. Don't you know without me, you can do nothing. Mm, there is no thing possible for us without God. I tell them like this at our church, success without God is failure. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If God don't do it, it's done in vain. And if you do it without him, you're failing. My God, I don't care. I don't care how successful somebody may look. If they accomplish whatever they're doing and it was without God, it's failure. Mm. Mm. It's vain to run the race and to get all the way to the finish line only to find out you've been disqualified. Mm. My God, my God. Glory to God. It's failure to compete. Paul said it like this in 1 Corinthians. He said, I don't want to preach the gospel to you. And then I become a castaway. My God, my God. I don't want, I want, to, I don't want to tell you how to save yourself and lose my own soul. Woo! Glory to God. Without him, we are nothing. Don't you even know forgiveness is impossible without God. Yeah. Forgiveness is unattainable without the power of God. You know, you either been offended or you've been the offender. Either way it go. Either you needed to accept an apology or you needed to give one. Either way it goes, without God, forgiveness is unattainable. Oh, I'm trying to help you today. I'm trying to help somebody get out today. I want you to understand, without God, we are nothing. Yeah, somebody can apologize to you. And their apology can be accepted. But if you do it in your own human efforts... Every time you think about the incident, you'll return to the scene of the crime. Every time that, 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 that your mind will take you back and you'll pull down the yellow tape and you'll go back to the scene of the accident. You'll go back to the scene of the offense. You'll go back to the scene of the crime. You'll go back to where it happened and your forgiveness will become unforgiveness. If you do it without God. Without God, every time you attempt to forgive, your mind will take you back. You'll go back to that scene and you'll rehearse it again. You'll go over the offense again in your mind and you'll relive it and you'll be offended again. Oh, my God. We can do nothing without God. Our salvation is impossible without God. Every, every Sunday, I try to take you to Romans, the 10th chapter, the 9th verse. Why? Because salvation is only found in and through Christ Jesus. It's the only way. It's the only way. Without him, it's impossible. Our salvation is impossible without God. In Matthew, the 19th chapter, verse 26, Jesus, said, Jesus says this. He beheld the disciples and he said unto them, with man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Hmm. Yeah, see, the disciples had just asked Jesus. I want to keep you in the context. They said, who can be saved? Woo! He, he said, with man, it's impossible. He said, but with God, all things are possible. Yeah. Our salvation is through Christ Jesus. We can't be saved except we believe that we confess and believe. Why does the Bible say confess and believe? Because we say a whole lot of things with our mouth. Oh, my God. <laughs> he said, but it's got to be in your heart. <laughs> yeah. He said, confess and believe. You got to believe what you just said or else your faith, your salvation is unattainable. Forgiveness is unattainable unless it's through Christ Jesus. Let's move a little further. Our faith, our faith in God is founded and established on the rock. Oh my God. My faith in God. The reason why I believe that I receive my salvation is because my faith is founded on the rock, which is Christ. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, around the fifth verse, it says, your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. 
That's where your faith has to be. Not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I know I'm saved because I believe I receive from the power of God. My God, my God. Woo! See, because the Bible says in Hebrews that without faith it's impossible to please him. And who would want to serve a God and not please him? My God, my God. Who would want to serve a God that's been as good as he's been unto us? And we not want to please or live a life that's pleasing unto him. Oh, glory to God. Yes, yes, yes. See, if you saved today, according to Romans 10, 9, you've confessed with your mouth, you believed in your heart, you know. Oh, my God. You know. Oh, my God. Your faith has moved to knowing that I'm saved. But without faith, it's impossible to believe that you are saved because without faith, without faith, you fail to believe that you receive. Mm. And we got to believe that what he said we are, we are. Not what the world tells us we are, but what he says we are. That's what we are. The Bible says without faith in God, our salvation is impossible. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. So without faith, our salvation is of a no effect. Oh, my God. My success. Look, let's look, look at here. Not only without God are we nothing. My success is only success if it's in and through him. Ooh, I'm trying to help somebody today. If you really want to be successful, if you really want to live, live a life where your fruit, oh, that's what he said. He said, I'm the vine and my father is the husband man. He said, every branch in me that bears not fruit, he said, he take it away. That, that, that branch is no good. Because if it's not bearing fruit, it, it does not profit anything. Oh, my God. <laughs> why, would, why would you want a branch that doesn't bear fruit? He said he'd take it that away. But every branch that beareth fruit. Oh, my God. Every branch that beareth fruit. What kind of branch are you today? What kind of branch are you today? Are you one that's abiding in the vine? Are you one that's bearing fruit? And I'm going to show you today. <laughs> yeah, fruit is evident. See, faith is the substance of, but fruit is evident. Oh, my God. Ah, glory to God. I'm trying to help somebody today. Yeah, see, when the seed goes into the ground, the seed disappears. Hello, somebody. <laughs> yeah, for you gardeners out there. Yeah, when the seed goes into the ground, the seed disappears. Why? Because it's in the earth. But I want you to understand today, baby, it's not buried. It's only planted. Glory to God. And evident will come when that seed sprouts up. We ought to see some fruit. Now, I want you to understand today, all fruit ain't good fruit. <laughs> Glory to God. Look here. Not only are we nothing without God, nothing without him. We're nothing without one another. We need one another, y'all. Oh, my God. I'm getting happy today. We, not only are we nothing without God, we're nothing without one another. See, I told you, this, this nation, this country, this world was established off of the rock. <laughs> What's the rock, Pastor? The rock is the revelation that Peter had when Jesus said, Whom do men say that I am? And Peter boldly stood up and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Well, Jesus said, Flesh and blood didn't give you that, son. He said, But my Father had to give you that, which is in heaven. And he said, I'm going to build my church off of the revelation. What was the revelation? Not Peter. Don't, don't get it twisted. The church ain't built off of Pastor Whitley. Come on, somebody. The church ain't built off of man. The church ain't built off of Peter. He said, I'm going to build my church off of the revelation that you just had, Peter. That I am Christ. That I am the rock. Oh, my God. Woo! Glory to God. And he said this here. He said, because I'm the rock, and if you abide in me, guess what? You'll produce fruit. But not only that, he said, the fruit that you produce, I'm going to give you people for your life. How does this work, Pastor? Well, if, well go, go in your Bible. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 27th verse. And you know what it says when you get there? It says that we are the body of Christ. <laughs> go ahead, hit your brakes right there. Stop. We are the body of Christ. If we're the body, who's the head? Ooh, good God Almighty. <laughs> Oh, every everybody needs a head. Come on, somebody. If we're the body, right there in your Bible, it says we are the body of Christ. Now, everybody got to have a head. Now, who's the head of the body? Good God Almighty. 
Christ is the head of the body. And everybody has to operate in unison. Oh my God. See, we need each other. Not only do we need Christ. Remember in the garden when God created Adam? He looked at Adam and he hit the brakes. He said, eh! He said, Adam needs somebody. <laughs> oh, good God Almighty. It, it's not good for man to be alone. And we know the story. He created Eve. Why? Because he know that I, even though I'm the vine, even though I'm the source, I'm going to give you people for your life. Oh, my God. Oh, good God Almighty. Yeah, yeah. He gave him Eve just like he's giving you a pastor, just like he's giving you friends, just like he's giving you family, just like he's giving you associates, just like he's giving you people for your life. And we need one another to accomplish what God has given us to do. Oh, God, my God, my God. See, too many of us, see, that's the reason why we get, we've pulled away from God, because it's become all about me instead of all about us. Oh, my God. In your home, on your job, it has to be a unified operation. Oh, my God. For the body to, to function properly, it has to function in unity. Oh, my God. See, we were created in the image of God to live and to work together in peace and harmony, united together as one. Oh, my God. Woo! Man, when you can get this body to function as a single unit, my God, I don't need my head going this way, my arm going this way, my leg going that way. No, I need the body to function as a unit. Oh, my God. Woo, this is good, y'all. <laughs> See, we were created to work together, to function together, to operate together. Everybody, it's no white, no black, no, no Jew, no Greek. He said, you are all one body. Mm. And he said, I'm the head. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Look here. My success doesn't mean you fail. Let me say that again. I'm trying to help somebody today. My success does not mean you fail. Mm. Your success is not done at the detriment of my success. Because when we work together, whatever we achieve, oh my God, <laughs> we all win. Glory to God. I don't care if I'm behind you, if I'm pushing you. Guess what? If I'm pushing you, when you get there, guess what? I'm there too. Oh, that's a good praise to praise him at. What? Because we got to come together and work together. Helen Keller. Do you know who Helen Keller is? Some of you young people maybe may need to Google her. Helen Keller. She was blind, but she, but she had more insight than many of us with, that can see. Oh, my God. Helen Keller, she said this. She said, alone, we can do so little, but together, we can do so much. Oh, my God. Together, together, we can accomplish so much. And look, when we come together up under the head, oh, my God. When we get together under the head, when the body comes together under the head, which is Christ. Oh, my God. Woo! He said, I and you and you and me. Verse 4, John, first, uh, John, the 15th chapter, verse 4, it says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Oh, my God. And there's too many of us are trying to bear our own fruit. Mm. And I want you to know today, that's some strange fruit. That's some bad fruit. That's some corrupt fruit. Oh, good God Almighty. Tony Dungy, Coach Tony Dungy, he said, Today we live in a divided country, and on, the only one that is happy is Satan. Oh my God. Mm. The only one that's happy is Satan. Why? Because this is exactly what he wants. Dysfunction, distrust, hatred. All these things here help his kingdom flourish. But we must realize that our fight is not against one another. Our fight is against Satan and the spirit of darkness. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Man, I, when I read that, man, that's a revelation. Our fight ain't against one another. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against carnality. But it's the spirit. It's the, it's the principalities and powers. Oh, my God. The rulers of darkness. My God. In high places. This is, what, this is what we're fighting against. I thought it was you. It don't have nothing to do with you. But it's all about the enemy and his plot and his plan to destroy what God, what God has put together. Mm. <laughs> See, he's the author of confusion. And he's only happy when confusion is going on. This is the reason why I tell our protesters, we don't protest at 11 o'clock at night. That's no peaceful protest. 
No, we protest in the daytime when we can see. That's peaceful protest. At night, this is when the author of confusion comes in. Hello, somebody. This is when all battle of wickedness comes in. And then all of your good is evil spoken of. The enemy's assignment is to kill, steal, and destroy. To kill, steal, and destroy what? What God has created and ordained. We must understand, people of God, we are stronger together than we are apart. Oh, my God. Look here. A nation divided against itself cannot defend itself. Mm, let me help you today. A nation divided against itself cannot defend itself. A house divided, the Bible said, is soon to fall. A people divided are heading for destruction. We're better together. The, the father, the head of the body, Christ, wants us to live in unity without having a, the Lord to lord over us. Oh, he said, I ain't got a lord over you because I created you to work together, to come together, to love one another. Oh, my God. To bear one another's burdens. Hello, somebody. Mm. He said, I don't need the Lord over you. I do this. I, I want you to work together. I want you to serve together. I want you to love one another because it pleases the Father. <laughs> Paul said it like this in, in Philippians 1.27. I'm reading the amplified version here. It says, only be sure to lead your lives in a manner that will be worthy of the gospel of Christ. So that whether I come and be with you or whether I remain absent, from you. He said, I'll hear about you standing firm. What? With one spirit, with one purpose, with one mind. And he said, you'll be striving together. Oh my God. Working together as if in combat to do what? To fight for the faith of the gospel. Oh, my God, my God. Woo! That's what he's looking for. He's looking for us to work together, to come together. Man, we're stronger together. We can accomplish more together. And imagine this, us together with God. Woo! Glory to God. That's a win-win. That's a win-win. We're better together. Our world, our country, our jobs, our homes all require that we come on one accord. I'm going to tell you right now, if half the people in your house doing one thing and half the people in your house doing something else, I'm telling you, you're going to have dysfunction. You're going to have chaos. You're going to have confusion. But when you get everybody in the house on one accord, on your job, if everybody on the job would come together for one, with one accord, for with one purpose, oh, my God, how much more can we do? Woo! How, how successful can we be? My God, my God. Paul, he makes an appeal in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, to the believers at, a, at the church of, of, of Ephesians. He says this, I, Paul, a prisoner of the Lord. My God, I could stop right there. He said, I'm a prisoner. I've been arrested. I've been apprehended. Why? By Christ. And I didn't resist the rest. Oh, my God. <laughs> Glory. He said, I didn't resist the rest. I've been apprehended. I'm a prisoner of the Lord. And he said, I appeal to you. This is Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the first verse. He said that you live a life worthy of the calling which you have been called. My God, what have we been called? We've been called to be the branches. Oh, glory to God. Let's go back to John, the 15th chapter. See, if you want to identify yourself, if you want to really realize who I am, I am a branch mm, that abides in a vine. And God takes care of the whole thing. My God, my God. Who are you? What is your purpose? My purpose, according to John, the 15th chapter, my purpose is to produce fruit. Oh, my God. Woo, glory to God. But without God, I want you to understand today, I am nothing. I can do nothing. Oh, my God. And everything I have is nothing. Woo, oh my God. If I do it without him. Glory to God. Paul says in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, he said, I'm a prisoner of the Lord. And I appeal to you. I beseech you, brethren, that you live your lives worthy of the call. My God, that you've been called. What did he call you? He called you a branch. <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm proud to be called a branch as long as I'm abiding. The problem is we don't want to be called branches no more. So we, dis we disconnect ourselves from the vine. Ooh. And he tells us, he says, without me, you can do nothing. 
No thing is possible for them that are not in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, he said, live your life worthy of the call. He said, you need to exhibit godly character, moral courage, personal integrity, a mature behavior. Come on. A life that expresses gratitude in your attitude that God has given you salvation. We got to also love humanity. Oh, my God. Come on, somebody. What God created? You got a problem with what God created? My God. He said you got to love humanity. He said forsake self-righteousness. Got to love gentleness. Maintain self-control. Patience. Bearing one another's burdens. He said in the spirit of bond of peace. Woo, my God. Each individual working together to make the whole successful. That's it. That's that body. Each part of the body working together to make the whole successful. Don't you know in your job, they don't care nothing about the particular section that you work in as long as that section is working in unison with the other sections to accomplish the will and the mission of that corporation. Hello, somebody. Woo! Oh, my God. As it is with God. The body of Christ needs to work together. Why? So that we can accomplish the mission. Oh, my God. So that we can accomplish the mission of God. Oh, my God. It's not about your individual place. It's not about your individual church. It's not about your individual denomination. It's not about your in individual uh, opinion. It's about God and what he says. Oh, my God. We're working together in unison to accomplish the mission of of God. Woo! We're nothing without you. Oh my God. Go ahead. Hashtag that somebody. I'm nothing without you. Nothing without you, God. I'm nothing without you. We need to realize it. And not only we're nothing without him, we're nothing without the people that God has given us to have the success that we need to have in life. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's a good place to praise him. God don't give you people for seasons. Some, pe some people, I mean, God, excuse me. God does give you people for seasons, but he also gives you people for your life. They may have been for that season, but they were for your life in that season. And when your season changed, sometimes those people change. But you got to understand, <laughs> glory to God, you got to understand that God got some more people for your next season. Oh my God. And then he got some people that stay with you through all seasons. Oh <laughs> my God, God. My wife, my wife, we said it last night. Some people are ride or die. They with you through every season. They with you through every storm. They with you through every test. And God has given them to you. And God said, as long as you and them come together under him, which is the head of the body, my God, my God. He said, now you can do something. Now you can accomplish something. Now all things become possible. See, people love to quote scripture all kind of ways, out of text, in text, over here, over there. No, people say, I can do all things through Christ. He said, yeah, but I gave you some people to work with. Why you can't work with them? Because that's the only way you're going to be able to do what I need you to do. Oh, Come on, come on, come on. He said, that's the only way you're going to get done what I want you to do. And when you learn how to work together, to come together, he said, then you can do all things. He said, I got you covered. He said, I am the true vine. Glory to God. I am the true vine. He said, when you learn to come together with your brothers, with your sisters, hello, somebody. He said, when y'all learn to work together, come together, stop fussing, fighting, arguing, backbiting and backstabbing. He said, when you come together, learn to work together, learn to love one another, learn to bear one another burden. He said, now all things, my God, he said, the gloves are off, the limitations come off. All things become possible for you. Mm. My God, you can do anything now. He said, yeah, y'all working together. He said, man, y'all can accomplish something. He even told us one time in scripture, he said, just to give you an example, he said, look at the ant. He said, stop stepping on them. Look at them. You can learn something from them. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah, yeah. He said, see them ants? They not a people. He said, but they work together. <laughs> oh, my God. Woo! They work together. Mm -hmm. You know how they survive? They make sure that they storing up now 
for when the storm comes. They making sure that they storing up now and they're working together. Oh my God. He said, you can learn something, my God, from an ant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you so smart. He said, yeah, but look at that ant. He said, you can learn something from an ant. He said, those ants will get together and they will work together. He said, and when the storms of life come, when, when, the, when the storms start to rage, he said, them ants can sit back and eat good and they can sit back and not have to worry about it. Why? Because they combine their efforts together for the glory of the whole mission. Oh, my God. Man, if we would learn to come together, my God, woo, we could produce fruit, y'all. Some of us are wondering, well, Pastor, why I'm not producing fruit? Check your connection. Check your connection. I've been praying. I've been working. I'm trying to get along with everybody. The Bible says, is it in your heart? He said, because I'm the vine, my father is the husband, man, and if you're in me and I in you, much fruit. Fruit becomes evident. I'm going to help you today. What's on your tree? What's coming off your branches? Because if you're in him, and I'm going to tell you right now, God wants his fruit to be evident in your life. That's the reason why the Bible says others will see you and call you blessed. Yeah. Oh, my God. Why are they calling you blessed? The Bible said they will see you and call you blessed. Why are they calling you blessed? They see your fruit. God. Woo! Glory to God. They see your fruit. And they say that's a producer. Oh my God. That's a fruit producer right there. It becomes evident. I don't want nobody following me as your pastor and I'm not producing. I'm not showing you fruit. Why? Because I'm in him. It's not fruit of myself. He said if you try to produce it of yourself, you can't do it. My God. He said, but if you get in me, he said, I'm going to show you who I am. Oh, my God. It's not about us. It's not about them, but it's all about him. My God. If you get in God, the fruit is going to be evident. The fruit is going to be hanging off of you and others is going to see it. My God. <laughs> see, the truest sign of abiding is fruit bearing. Let me help somebody today. Yeah, some people say they're in Christ, but we ain't seen no fruit. Mm. Mm. Some people, we're, we're calling people something that we have yet to see the manifestation of. Mm. I'm going to let that one, I'm going to let that one marinate. We're calling some people something that we have yet to see the manifestation. Now we know faith, faith is a substance, but you better read that scripture right. That substance becomes evident. Oh, help me. Help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Oh, so look now, look here. Now, abiding, the truest sign of abiding is what? Fruit bearing. The truest sign. Go back to John the 15th chapter. If he's the true vine, my God, if he's the true vine, and verse 4 says, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. He's showing us right there. So now you're going to tell me that God got a tree that don't bear no fruit? No, I remember he saw one that wasn't bearing fruit. Hello, somebody. And he taketh it away. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. But the truest sign of fruit bearing is that I'm abiding. I can tell if you're abiding. Because <laughs> we're going to see some fruit eventually. And now we know the Bible says, speak those things that be not as though they were. That's what we're supposed to do. But we've been calling something, something that we have yet to see the evidence of. And after a while, we ought to, by faith, we start calling you that. <laughs> Good God Almighty. Woo! By faith, we said you was that. See, that's how you bought your house. That's how you got your car. That's how you got your job. You spoke it before you got there. Mm, mm. Then the job became evident. Yeah, yeah. But then the house became evident. Oh, you know you said it. <laughs> yeah, you had to say it before you before you saw it. <laughs> Good God Almighty. That's what faith is. So the truest sign of fruit uh, uh, of fruit of abiding is fruit bearing. No fruit, no root. Hello, somebody. No fruit, no root. We know whether you're abiding in Christ because the fruit is going to be evidence. Now I can <laughs> I can tell when someone is abiding in Christ, their fruit will be evident. Now, all fruit ain't good fruit. Mm. The Bible says in Mark, the 16th chapter, 17th through the 18th verse, it says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Ah! Them that abide. Them that are in the vine. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> he said, in my name, my God, Mark the 16th chapter, 17, 18 verse, he says, and in my name, they can cast out demons. Oh my God. In my name, they should speak. In new tongues. He said they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. Mm. He said oh yeah it's going to be some fruit. He said oh yeah it's going to be evident. My God my God. He said you're going to see it. My God. Woo. He said for y'all. For y'all Thomases. For y'all that's from the Missouri. The, the show me state. He said you're going to see it. My God my God. He said it shall be evident. Good God Almighty. I know, I know when a man or a woman is really connected to the vine because they should be producing fruit. My God, I ought to see some fruit on your tree. What's on your tree today? My God, is there any fruit on your tree today? See, we're nothing without him. And if we're bearing anything, if there is any fruit on our tree and we're not in him, that fruit is bad. That fruit is corrupt. Oh my God, my God. <laughs> He said, if you abide in me and I in you, he said, you can, you can speak who, with new tongues. He said, he said, and you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's in your Bible. Mark the 16th chapter, 17, 18 verse. You read it for yourself. I want you to know today, no matter what they call you, you're nothing without him. They can call you supervisor on the job. They can call you, they can call you colonel, general in the army. They can call you, they can call you boss. They can call you mama. They can call you daddy. But until you are in him, you are nothing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. We can call you daddy, but when we gonna see you father something? Ooh. Mm -hmm. See, just calling somebody something don't make them that. The fruit that they produce. Tells us who they are. Oh, my God, my God, this is good. If we produce any fruit apart from God, it's bad fruit. It's tainted fruit. It's corrupt fruit. Better yet, it's strange fruit, if you will. Mm, that's some strange fruit. You ever seen some fruit? They doing so much stuff in laboratories now. That's an apple orange? Mm, I don't want none of that. Mm, mm. That's a banana pineapple? No, no. Yeah, that may be good when you're mixing different flavors, but you better be careful. Mm, that's strange fruit. Mm -hmm. See, success without God is failure. And I want you to know this. Winning without God is losing. Hello, somebody. Yeah. If you win without God, you're really losing. And good without God is really bad. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, here, before I know my time is running. Before we close, I got to show you the solution to bearing bad fruit. Mm. I got to give you the solution today to bearing bad fruit. This is the solution, y'all. Do you see verse 3? Let's go back to John, the 15th chapter. It's all there in them five scriptures. I told you he shows, he gives us identity. See, our identity is, Bishop, Bishop Holcomb taught us this years ago, our identity is in divinity. Oh, my God. <laughs> our identity is in him. Oh, <laughs> my God. Our identity is in Christ. He said, I am the vine. He gives us our identity. Then he gives us purpose. He gives us power. And he also gives us his plan. Oh, my God. What's your purpose in life? To produce fruit. Who are you? I'm a branch. Oh, my God. I'm a branch of the living vine. Woo! Glory to God. What's your purpose in life? My purpose is to produce fruit. You ought to be on. You ought to be. You ought to be producing fruit everywhere you go in your life. And it should be good fruit. But if, by some, some reason, you're producing bad fruit. My God, every time I turn around, think this going wrong, that's going wrong, this going wrong. Well, right there in John, the 15th chapter, you know, our central verses today, 1 through 5. Let's go to verse 3. He says, now you are clean. What happened? How did I get clean? Well, wait a minute. Oh, he said, now this is how you get clean. So you got to be clean before you can produce the right fruit. Oh, my God. Woo! He says, now you are clean. How did I get clean? What happened that cleaned me? He said, through the word which I've spoken to you. Oh, my God. Look at, do you see it? Am I in your Bible? If you go to Psalms 119 around verse 9, the Bible says this. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his ways or her ways? It says, by taking heed according to the word. 
Here in verse 3 of John the 15th chapter, third verse, it says, now you are clean. And how do I get clean, pastor? I get clean through the word which he has spoken. Oh, my God. That's why I told you before we started, get your Bible. Get your B-I-B-L-E out. Get your Bible out because this is the word that has the ability and the power to wash us clean. Oh, my God. Woo! You need to take a bath in this word. He said, because now you are clean. The Bible says in Psalms 119.9, it says, where shall I clean a young man or woman cleans their ways? Taking heed unto the word. My God. Woo! We need to take a wash in the word. <laughs> We become clean. We cleanse our thoughts. We cleanse our heart. We cleanse our mind. We cleanse our ways. Woo, clean, I say. Clean, I say. Now, once you're clean, once you've, been, once you've been washed in this word, guess what? Now you can present yourself to the vine. Oh, my God. Now you can connect to the vine. Oh, man. you And what? Once you connect, what are you ready to do now? Produce Fruit, woo! Not just any kind of fruit, but fruit that is worthy of God. My God, woo! I'm a fruit producer. Oh my God, I'm a fruit producer. Come on, somebody, I'm a fruit producer. And God is looking for good fruit to be produced by His people. Yeah, this is how we sanctify ourselves. This is how we cleanse ourselves by the washing of the water of the word. Woo! My God, my God. This is how we cleanse ourselves. We get right with God through the washing of the water of the word. My God. Now I'm ready to be presented. I'm ready to produce fruit now. Not a spot, not a wrinkle. My God. <laughs> Once we allow God and the word of God to wash us, to cleanse us, our ability to produce fruit becomes evident. Now I'm not producing fruit so that I can brag. I'm not producing fruit so I look good for you. I'm producing fruit so that I please the one who sent me. <laughs> oh, good God am I. I'm producing fruit so that, so that I manifest what the vine, oh my God, says I should manifest. <laughs> he said, oh yeah, if you're in me and I'm in you, you ought to produce fruit. You shall produce fruit. You will produce fruit. My God, you need to look on your, you need to look on your branch today and see what kind of fruit you are you producing. My God, I talk to Christians all the time and we get the, the, ho, the ho hum story, the, the, the hum ho story, how bad it is, the woe is me story. You cannot tell me that you're abiding in the vine and all you producing is bad fruit. Mm, mm, my God, my God. He said, if you abide in me, not only should you produce fruit, he said you should produce much fruit. My God. What are you talking about, Pastor? Let's go to verse 5. He said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Anytime, <clears throat> I know I got to slow down because I don't want y'all to miss this. Anytime you hear scripture say something more than once, uh, when I was in school, the professor used to say, hint, hint. He'd repeat something. That's probably going to be on the test. Yeah, yeah. Here in verse 1, he said, I am the true vine. Then when you go to verse 5, he say, I'm the vine. Why did he have to remind us of who he is? Ooh, why does God have to remind us of who he is? My God, I am that I am. Woo, my God. I am who I told you I was. I am who I am. Woo! But he says it again for those of us that may have lost it somewhere. In verse 1, he lets you know that I am the true vine. In verse 5, he says, and I am the vine. And then he lets you know who you are again. And you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bring forth what? Much fruit. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm talking about bringing forth much fruit. My God, my God, my God. No, I'm not bringing forth fruit for you fruit inspectors. I know some of y'all like to throw shade and look at other people's fruit. No, I'm bringing forth fruit because the master said that I would. Oh, my God. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm bringing forth fruit because God said those that are in him should produce fruit. Mm. Today we live in a society where we are witnessing the fruit of our nation. That's not abiding in the vine. A corrupt nation. A, corrupt, a, a nation that needs to be cleansed in the water of the word. We're looking at it today. You over here. I'm over here. This cause. That cause. We're, see, a house divided cannot stand. Oh, my God. 
Oh my God. I told you earlier, a house divided cannot defend itself. Oh my God. Whenever you got internal fighting, how are you going to fight those things that come up upon you? My God, you already lost. You're fighting within and then you got to deal with the things that are without. Mm. Jesus said, abide in me and I in you because the branch can do nothing of itself. We live in a society today that's the me society. <laughs> it's all about me and not about we. We live in a society today where everybody is every man for himself. Get yours like I got mine. We see people suffer and struggle, and instead of helping them, we heap more onto ourselves. Mm. Jesus said, abide in me and I in you, because the branch can do nothing of itself. Anything that you think that you're doing is not of God if it's without God. Jesus said, you have not chosen me. <laughs> he had to remind us. He said, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. Where are you getting this from, Pastor? Right there in John, the 15th chapter. Go to verse 16 and 17. He said, I didn't choose you. You didn't choose me. I've chosen you. And he said, I didn't just choose you or ordained you. See, remember when we started, I told you God has given you purpose, power, his plan. And not only that, he gave you provision. Oh my God. Why would, he, why would he tell you to do something and not give you the ability or the agility to do it? You see it? In verse 16 and 17, he said, you have not chosen me. I chose you. And I didn't just choose you. I ordained you. Oh, my God. He said, I deputized you. I put a badge on you. Oh, my God. I gave you authority. My God. Woo! Jesus. And you should go forth. And what do you go forth and do? Bring forth fruit. That your fruit. And then he said, now, see, this is what good fruit does. Bad fruit, it don't remain. Good fruit, he said, that your fruit should remain. Mm, you see that? In your Bible. It's in your Bible. And whatsoever you ask of the Father, he said, in my name, Woo! in my name, he may give it to you. Am I in your Bible? Is that in your Bible too? John, the 15th chapter, verses 16 and 17. He said, I didn't choose you. You didn't choose me. I chose you. He said, and I didn't just choose you. Oh, you know the scripture over in Jeremiah, the 29th. He said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Mm. Glory to God. Even in there, he said, I ordained you. I called you. Woo. I said what you shall be. Woo. Glory to God. Woo. And you should go forth. He said, I'm giving you purpose. I'm giving you my plan. I'm giving you power and I'm giving you provision. Oh, glory to God <laughs> that you produce fruit and it's not in your own strength. It's not in your own ability. He said, but it's in my ability. It's in my strength Woo! that I'm giving you power. Oh, my God. He, he, these things. Here it is. Here it is. I command you that you love one another. My God, Jesus, Jesus, that we love one another. He told us who he was. He gave us purpose, power, provision, his plan. But then he told us that we got to love one another to accomplish his will. Woo! <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Some people say, all I need is the Lord. He said, yeah, but I gave you some people too. Woo! And you got to love one another so that you can accomplish my will. Woo! Glory to God. You see it, it's right there in your Bible. I want to help you today. We are nothing without him. Nothing without him. And we need one another working together in unison to please him. Because we cannot please him by ourselves. We cannot please him saying we have faith in him, but refusing to work with those he has given us. Cho choosing not to live in harmony and peace with those that he's put. He didn't put you here to be an independent agent. Come on. He put us here to work together, to love one another, to bear one another burdens so that we please him. He's the head. <laughs> he's the lead. Oh, he's the chief shepherd. And if we're following him, we got to do it together. Oh, glory to God. And he said that you love one another. My God. 
Love is the central fruit, y'all. See, when we start talking about producing fruit, love is the central fruit. Every other fruit is a byproduct of love. Every other fruit is a simple byproduct of the main fruit. Because God is love, that's the central fruit. And every other fruit has to come from love. I want to help you today. I know the society and the world that we're living in today and the times in which we live in today. If you've been reading your Bible, you can see the Bible manifest in itself. Even these things must come to pass. Some people saying, why this happened? Why that happened? We just left Mississippi on yesterday coming for my funeral. And a lot of people say, why did God allow this to happen? Or why God allowed that to happen? These things must happen. We all must go this way. Those that died before Christ come back, the Bible said the dead in Christ shall rise again. Oh my God. <laughs> God's allowing these things to happen because he said in his word, they must come to pass. And those of us that know scripture, we see these things coming to pass. And what we must do now more than ever before, we must abide in the vine. We must start producing fruit that's meat for the master. Oh my God. <laughs> we got to abide in this vine. Glory to God. If you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins today, I'd like to take your attention to Romans, the 10th chapter. The Bible says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And if you believe in your heart, you shall receive what you believe. But if you just confess without the faith of believing, you won't receive anything. But if you confess in your mouth the Lord Jesus and that God raised him from the dead, and if you renounce sin and Satan, yeah, there's no middle road. <laughs> you're either in or you're out. If you renounce sin and Satan, the Bible says you're saved. Now start to connect yourself to the vine and those that God put in your life that you can produce fruit for your life. We love you. We bless you. We pray that God's word has met you right where you're at today. We pray that the anointing of the Holy Ghost will surround you even now. That the Holy Spirit, which is the director, the guide, the lead, the teacher of the church, would order your steps. The Bible says, lean not to your own understanding, but in all of thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. He shall show you the fruit that you should produce. We ask that you join us here on Tuesday nights for our TNT Tuesday night teaching. Every message that I will teach this month, you'll hear the undertone of leadership somewhere in it. October is Pastor Appreciation Month. I want you to appreciate the gift that God has given you, wherever that may be at. If you're a member or one of our <coughs> supporters of the Christian House of Praise, we pray that you would <clears throat> support this ministry with your prayers, number one. And your financial contributions are a blessing, and we thank God for them. But your prayers and your faith is what moves heaven. We pray that throughout this month, you always hear an undertone this month of leadership because God is calling his people the church, to leadership. We like to say everybody's a leader, but I want you to know you'll be known by your fruit. I love you. May the Lord keep you. May his face continue to shine upon you. May the Lord give you peace. And may he give you sweet rest. It's in the Lord Jesus' Son, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, that we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. And may the Lord keep you. Bye-bye.